There's a big issue with the mail services plans to renovate and update their fleet of vehicles. Actually, multiple issues. So let's start from the beginning. Last February, the Louis DeJoy led USPS awarded a 10 year contract to produce vehicles to Oshkosh Defense. They were to produce up to 165,000 trucks, the largest effort in literally decades to replace the aging fleet of the post office. Oshkosh plans to produce the vehicles in South Carolina, a state with some of the most anti-union labor laws in the country. So that's a big issue. That's not the biggest issue though, nor the fact that they were chosen rather than let's see the workhorse group, which which produces electric vehicles and is based in Cincinnati. So they decided to go with Oshkosh Defense. What are we invading the mail? Anyway, um, that's not the issue. The big issue also isn't that they look like, what if a vehicle was frumpy? Let's take a look at this. It's just, it, it's fine. It's Toy Story 1, dude. That's <laughs> Why where this is it was a made. character from Cars? This was designed what? in Pixar in 2000, maybe <laughs> 1995. Well, that, that's what it's gonna look like, I get. But that that's not the big issue. Let's be clear, the big awful. issue. Is climate? Do you think it's all? It looks, it looks apologetic. Like I know I'm not cool. Even its anyway. eyebrows is like, mm, this is this is what I look like. <laughs> it looks surprised. It just it looked in the mirror for the first time. Anyway, that isn't the big issue. Here is the big issue. When the USPS first announced this contract back in February of last year, it said that the plan was to purchase between 50,000 and 160,000 next generation delivery vehicles, which first of all is a massive range to declare, but whatever, we'll leave that aside. These vehicles, we were told, would be a mixed fleet. Some would be battery electric vehicles, which obviously we want as many as possible. Others used a quote, fuel efficient internal combustion engines with an ability to be converted at a later date, quote, to keep pace with advances in electric vehicle technology. Okay, so you got a mix of more efficient internal combustion engine vehicles, but don't even worry because someday those can be turned into hybrids or replaced with electric systems. And a bunch will also be electric. All of what they said is in theory may be true, but there's not a lot of evidence of much of it. And a lot of what we found out since is really bad. So let's see, 10% will be electric. It's 2022, these are gonna be produced over years, 10% will be electric. The ones that aren't electric do though have those new higher fuel efficiency engines, which give them 8.6 miles per gallon. The current one's 8.2, that's not that much better. I shouldn't need to point that out. And by the way, there is no plan in place to replace those eventually with electric ones. So. That seems to have been a clear lie. And the rest of it is like they're gonna spend so much money and this opportunity to change the mail service to get 0.4 more miles per gallon average while producing these in a state that's gonna crush any union effort. Brett, what do you think? Why does it need to look like this? <laughs> like. If Why it was, does it, if need it was gonna look like that? It should be electric at least. So, like, how much do Amazon delivery trucks get per gallon? Is it 8.6 miles a gallon? I'll say this. Odds, so actually, the more I think about it, 8.6 miles per gallon, it only goes. Like it, it's not doing much open road cruising, let's put it that way. Like you're going yeah. and stopping and going and stopping. You're you're always in first gear. You're always like screaming the engine to get this heavy thing going. But I feel like there's got to be a better way to do it. I understand the the current. I like being able to upgrade it, but it's just it screams but like, but to again, me. They don't have a plan for that. They don't have a plan, and so that yeah. that is the that's the more disturbing issue is the messaging and the opportunism people use when talking about something that is actually a service that theoretically works and is run by the government in America, but like it's just to stop taking advantage of the post office to make your political points and to score political points and most importantly to siphon taxpayer and yes that includes stamps dollars away yeah. from people and towards your giant friends in your quote right to work state which is wrong for work uh, uh except in very specific circumstances mm -hmm. that that have proven themselves to be extraordinarily rare
Yeah, I, I hope that you're right. I hope that he's at least getting money off of this because it feels like he's just, it feels like he goes into work and he says, what can I do to screw these people over? That's what it feels like. Um, I mean, he's Judge Doom from Roger Rabbit. I bought the red car so I could dismantle it and build a freeway. Like when the guy's <laughs> personal financial interests are so reportedly seated in the success of competitors to this industry that he, this organization that he's running, like I feel like I'm not a conspiracy theorist when I determine that all these in initiatives seem to sabotage the very organization he's entrusted with running for our benefit. Yeah. Because as Joe Rogan even proved to Dave Rubin, like post office goes places that those private deliverers don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's the sort of places that conservatives love to pretend that they care about. Anyway, DeJoy is saying he's not going to resign. He says he intends to remain head of the Postal Service for a long time, where he can continue screwing over the vehicles, screwing over communities that'll have more pollution, screwing over our effort to deal with climate change, while also making mail delivery slower and more expensive. So that's cool. By the way, I looked it up. Amazon back in 2020 purchased or put in an order for 100,000 electric delivery trucks from Rivian. I don't know what the effective mile per gallon out of that is or how quickly those will be put into effect. But that's the idea that they will be doing more electric. And by the way, super last point, let's not talk anymore about this. They can't replace every single one with an electric vehicle as of right now. I get that. There are some routes that are incredibly long in rural you know, areas and those sorts of things. But it could be 90, 10 the other way. We could at least work towards that. This is so. It's almost as if doing the electric thing would be admitting that a better world is possible and they just don't want to do it. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.